Okay, boys and girls, sports fans, Den here, JDOD. Woo! I'm here with two very special guests, Martin Gillet. He doesn't really do SAPHR, he's a pilot, right? And then we have Jarrett Pasahanik, have I got it right? You do. Who does do HR. <laughs> and he almost knows what he's talking about. Yeah, of course he does. Right, anyway, guys, we're here at Sapphire now. Um, you guys have been briefed, I think, on all things HR, HCM, and everything else that's going on. Correct? Most of it. Yes, Most of it. So, kicking off with you, Martin. Hold the mic, your turn. You're in the chair. I'm in the chair. So, go on. What's happening? What's happening? So obviously we have a lot of things going on on the market. We have seen here with Laos that we have a lot of opportunities coming up with the latest release, the latest products. There's obviously a lot of question raised and um, obviously there's a lot of uh, enthusiasm and a lot of energy coming out of it. Um, but on my side, the big question I would have to raise is regarding the transition with SAP and how do we actually merge the education side and how, how do we get all the good people to work with those products and actually to deliver it. Right. So uh, that's the primary focus that we had so far. Um, um, the major announcement that we had, and, Jerry, um, and Jared would probably uh, chime on that, is the, uh, the payroll announcement. So finally, SAP has uh, revealed the strategy for the, the payroll in the cloud. So that's also a major announcement that we can uh, deliver so far. And uh, we're looking for some more, let's say, maybe a smaller announcement, but nonetheless important in the forthcoming hours. Okay, Jared. Okay. Well, one thing I'm happy about is that uh, HR has back to being something that's a real focus. And I've heard that several times here that, you know, from, a, from an executive level down, there's a real focus on HR. So that makes guys like Martin and I really happy. Um, we, heard, we heard some good things today. Um, you know, payroll in the cloud, uh, when we heard that, you know, initially I was extremely excited. Um, when I started to look under the covers a little more, I have to say my excitement level unfortunately went down a little bit just because it's really just hosted payroll. It's going to use um, SAP on-premise and, and there, it's, it's not hosted by SAP. So it's, you know, for the folks out there that are looking for the real efficiencies and you know, the multi-tenant SaaS version, that's not what this is. And so longer term, I think that's what SAP is going to have to build. Um, but the fact is they're going to have a cloud solution. It's going to follow a success factor schedule. They're, look, they're aiming for July. Uh, we heard on Employee Central, they've, uh, they've got several big customers that um, they're following SAP's methodology of not announcing their new customers, which, uh, which Martin and I had a conversation about you know, hoping they would, but um, they have a lot of innovation planned for Employee Central, but you know, we really just need to see what that really is. Okay. So Employee Central is um, their idea of um, HR administration as such, correct? Mm -hmm. um, why should any of your customers be interested in a solution when SAP is already the number one. Why should it be interested in this kind of solution? What, what, from your perspective, makes it sufficiently different for you to credibly stand in front of a customer and say, you know what, this is something that you should uh, genuinely consider? Go on, Martin, you try. Well, there are several reasons. I would say maybe, in my own opinion, the first one I could think of is basically perhaps the user interface. So, um, uh, success, factor, success factor is basically known as, at least for me, as a tremendous user interface, and that's what lasts on the line again today. Is uh, no matter what happens behind the scene, he wants the user to be happy in working with the product. So, I think first the user interface does matter, and to be honest, the um, administrative layer that SAP has provided decades ago looks a bit uh, a bit old those days. So, if you do want to have a smooth transition, perhaps now is the time to make the smooth transition and go towards success factors. But nonetheless, you can still work perhaps with the old kind of you know foundation that you currently have, but in the next coming years, probably what you're looking at. Hmm. What, what about yourself, Jaron? Yeah, I mean, for me, I think it's going to be a hard to do a rip and replace example. I mean, customers have, the SAP HCM product is core is a solid offering, and big customers who have customized that, I just don't see them wanting to just take out what they have and go to success factors. I just don't think there's a business case for that. Um, you know, net new customers, uh, I see that as a real opportunity for them. I see it potentially customers that may be going through an upgrade process and they want to reinvent the process and maybe they are, you know, they'll consider going to that. And, and you know, I think the Employee Central product, from what I've heard, it has some work to do as well. So mm -hmm. one of the good things we heard is that they're, you know, SAP has that intellectual, pro they, have, they have the knowledge on how to build this. So they're providing that information to success factors, and so they'll build that product up. They know that has to be a good product, but you know, I, I just again, I don't see any customers wanting to make that a uh, business case to make that switch. Okay, so Employee Central's effectively going to have to play catch up with um, uh, the the main cloud competitor Workday. I mean, what are your thoughts around that right at this moment in time? 
Well, there's still plenty of things to think ahead of. And of course, like we uh, discussed earlier today, uh, success factors has probably has to catch up you know, with some of the technology and the hype that's going on on the market. Mm. So probably what we're looking at is um, some heavy work in the forthcoming months to uh, maybe, if not already compete in a stronger way, uh, maybe bypass and go higher than the uh, competition. Right, okay. Yeah, and from my perspective, I see competition as a good thing. You know, as, as Workday continues to innovate, uh, success factors will have to continue to innovate. And so they're going to have to play in some areas a catch-up game. I think there's some areas where Workday will have to play a catch-up game to success factors. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's an exciting time. I think it's good for customers right now because they're going to have a lot of choice out in the marketplace. And, you know, if you're an SAP customer, there, I think there's some real advantages to looking at success factors. Um, if you're a new customer, you know, I think there's some advantages to looking at the options that are out there and finding the best one that meets your business requirements. Okay. Okay, boys and girls, or rather boys on the left. Didn't just, I think they are. We love you, Dennis. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Okay, what message would you like your customers to take away from this, given the fact that, you know, potentially this could be a very, very confusing story for, for them, I think, you know? On-prem, in the cloud, hosted, all these sort of technology-led uh, um, potential solutions that, that the company is talking about. What message do you want them to, to understand? There you go, man. Well, on my side, I would say that the key message is to take the time, make the assessment, review all the possible, let's say, functionalities offered currently on the market, see how it goes, and just take the time to make every best decision out of it. Don't make you, a quick decision. You don't want to rush things because, you know, Lars is quite enthusiastic and everything goes smoothly, but HR is in the spot. Is This is the big year for HR. So take the time, make some assumption, make some best decision, and also, I guess, probably they will have to get the funding to do it. So mm. take your time. Don't wait too long. But take the time and do it the proper way. Don't okay. rush it. Sure. Ah, so I think the key thing for customers is, again, a lot of what Martin mentioned is, I think the sales force is going to come in and they're going to heavily promote success factors. I mean, that's at the, they're going to say success factors under every circumstance. And, and I don't believe that's always the case. I think for some customers, on-premise is going to be the right answer. I think for some customers, success factors is going to be the right answer. So the first thing is, is take your time, evaluate the options, you know, it is a confusing time for customers. I mean, one thing that, that a lot of people don't realize is a lot of customers don't know success factors. It's not a given that, like all of us, we've heard that name for a while, but for some customers that have lived and breathed SAP, they, they don't know what success factors offer. So there's going to be a bit of an education out, and so I just think customers need to be armed with as much information as possible. And you know, various ways to do that, uh, read guys like Dennis, uh, go to the SAP community, just try to be armed with that information to make the right decision. Okay. All right, boys and girls, you heard it first here. Two of the world's best SAP experts on HR, as far as I know, anyway. And we'll have to come back and look at this again in a period of time, won't we? Thank Excellent. you. The, the question is, us. how many experts do you know? Maybe just two. Oh, I know a few, quite a few, right? <laughs> okay, right. Then, okay. <laughs> we take the compliment then. Thank, Thank you very much indeed, Thank boys and girls. Take care. Cheers. Cheers.